Hey guys, my name is Vincent. I'm an ITG player based out of the United States in Omaha, Nebraska. I've been playing dance games since 2005, and I've been competing in ITG tournaments since 2016. And one of the few things I love more than competing is educating. The custom ITG charts released by the community these days is almost unrecognizable from the stuff that people were making back in 2008. If you've played some charts released within the past few years, you may have noticed some weird abbreviations in some chart descriptions, and my goal is to clear up what those are. This video is going to serve as a crash course into ITG tech. I'll be going over the list of tech notations and what they mean. I'll also be providing examples of charts that feature those techniques. The goal is that by the end of this video that you're at least a little bit exposed to the patterns that make up modern technical charts and that you're able to identify them in your gameplay. So why should you watch this video? Even if you're not an ITG player, if you're a DDR player, even though DDR doesn't use these tech notations, you might be able to recognize some of the patterns I bring up this video and find a new and creative solution to something you've been stuck on. If you're a new ITG player, or if you're an old school player getting familiar with new charting styles, I can't promise that this video will turn you into an expert, but I think it'll lay a good foundation for you to know what to look for while you're playing new stuff. If you're an experienced ITG player, I might be able to explain something to you in a way that's different and helps you solidify your understanding of something you already knew. Anyways, with that said, we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. At any point, if you want to skip ahead to a specific technique, timestamps are provided in the description. Actually, a couple things before I start. The pacing of this video is pretty fast, so if there's a technique that you think is confusing or could use more attention, definitely drop a comment and I can maybe make a video in the future to dig deeper into it. Lastly, modern charts are much more nuanced than just play foot switches here or play brackets here. Step artists are having you mix and switch between different techniques all the time in a way that I just can't cover in this video. So I encourage you to like practice, 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 and just be open to playing everything, even the songs you might not like the music previews or the graphics for. Being open-minded about exposing yourself to everything is the best way to get better. Now that I've said that, we can get started. A crossover is a pattern that requires you to turn your body to hit the left arrow with your right foot or the right arrow with your left foot. I distinguish between two types of turns, a crossover and a cross under. A cross over is when the foot that's crossing crosses in front of the other foot. A cross under is when the foot that's crossing tucks behind the other foot. It's also possible for this notation to describe laterals, also known as scoobies or afranovas which require you to play both a left and right arrow each crossed over before the pattern resolves and spins you back to facing forward. A foot switch is when multiple of the same arrow appears in a row and are meant to be hit with different feet. The rhythms for a foot switch can be continuous and played straight through, or they can have a gap between and played like a gallop. It's common for a mind to be placed between notes to mark when a foot switch should occur, but not all charts necessarily follow this convention.
A side switch is a variant of a foot switch that happens on the left and right arrows. Side switches have all of the same characteristics as foot switches. They can be played as a continuous rhythm, or they can be played as a gallop with the space between notes. Just like with crossovers, side switches can be played in two orientations. They can be played with your body facing out and away from the center, or they can be played with your body facing in towards the center. Brackets are notes that require hitting two notes with the same foot, by rotating your foot over two adjacent arrows. They can be played as steps or jumps, or they can be played with holds. Double steps are when two different arrows are hit with the same foot. They can also be called forced double steps. Double steps can be marked in a couple ways. One way is with the mind cueing when a foot should be released from an arrow. Another way is through a hold. One foot stays on a hold while the other foot is forced to hit the other notes. Jacks are when multiple of the same arrow are hit with the same foot. This could be for two notes or any number more than that. Our problem with jacks is that it's possible to mistake them for foot switches. Take this chart for example. This is an excerpt from Valhalla and Five Guys One Pack. There's two sets of double down arrows. One of them is meant to be played as a foot switch and the other as a jack. So how are you supposed to know which one is played as which? A good rule of thumb that you can follow is that foot switches are typically marked with mines, and jacks are not marked with mines. So going back to this example, the first set of double down arrows has no mine, so we can play that as a jack. The second set of down arrows has a mine, so we can play that as a foot switch. Situations like this do come up in charts, so it's good to understand this rule. However, every step artist is different, and every chart has its own patterns within itself. Rather than taking the rule as truth 100% of the time, it's more reliable to study a chart and understand what's going to come to you ahead of time.
If a step artist has included XMOD in their tech notations, it means that there are speed changes either in the form of BPM changes or scroll gimmicks. To execute them, go into your player options and change your speed mod from a C mod to either an M mod or an X mod. A lot of charts may have speed changes even if it's not explicitly noted in the tech notation. The best way to find out if a chart has speed changes is to default to using an M mod or an X mod, rather than defaulting to a C mod. A flam is a term from percussion that describes two notes played in quick succession, a grace note and a main note. A good way to think of a flam is that it's almost like a jump, but the two notes are just a little bit displaced. Most of the time, a grace note comes before the main note. If the grace note comes after the main note rather than before, in the drumline world I've heard that referred to as a mouth, which is just flam spelled backwards. But in the ITG tech space, we refer to both as a flam, regardless of whether the grace note comes before or after the main note. If you play a chart with swing rhythms in it, there are going to be lots of rhythms paired in groups of two, but those are not classified as flams. They're kind of their own thing. The two notes in a flam are close enough together that they feel almost like a burst, like you're playing them almost at the same time. But if you see two notes in a swing rhythm, they're spaced out a lot more, so the timing of each note is more distinguished. A chart that references a specific quantization means that the rhythm appears in the chart in a meaningful way that the step artist wanted you to know beforehand. Bursts are self-explanatory in that it describes when a chart has a burst of notes that's notably faster than what came before it. Bursts can often be paired with quantization values to describe at what speed the bursts are, such as 24th bursts or 32nd bursts. These notations stand for rhythms and skittles, which describe charts where the timing of the rhythms is a core element of the chart's difficulty. Often this deals with charts that have notes that don't fall into a common quantization, hence the name skittles since the notes have a wide array of colors. Other times, the charts can be described by common quantizations, but it doesn't change the fact that difficult rhythms are still a core element of the chart. If you see any of these tech notations with a plus sign after it, it means that there are many instances of that technique appearing in the chart. For example, in Arcology on Permafrost, there's a plus sign on brackets, skittles, and 24ths, 
so you should expect more of those things in comparison to the other notations that are listed. And honestly, if you haven't even seen Arcology on Permafrost, you should pause this video right now and go watch a video of it. That chart is ridiculous. Sometimes you'll see STR in a tech notation breakdown, which stands for stream. This has its own set of rules, so I wanted to take some time to describe it on its own. Just a disclaimer that stream notations are something adopted from the Stamina community, which is a subset of the ITG community that primarily plays streams. My explanations may be incomplete for fully understanding Stamina play, so if you want to learn more, I'll put links in the description on how you can learn more about the notations that Stamina players use. A stream describes when there is a continuous run of notes, commonly 16th notes, but could also be any other quantization, such as 24ths. If you see a number, the number designates the number of continuous measures of 16th notes. So looking at this example breakdown, each number 8 represents 8 measures of stream. An at sign can be provided after a stream notation to tell you at what BPM the stream is being played. There is one caveat I'll try to explain as best as I can. Even if a stream in a song is written as 24th notes, the stream breakdown will describe the stream as if it were 16th notes. So for example, if a 160 BPM song has 4 measures of 24ths, if that stream were stretched out to be 16th notes, it would turn into 6 measures of 16th notes at 240 BPM. So the stream breakdown would say that it's 6 measures at 240. There's a reason why this works. Even though 16th notes are slower than 24th notes, we compensated for it by multiplying the BPM by 1.5, since 24th notes are 1.5 times faster than 16th notes. The two examples you see on the screen are effectively the same, just notated differently. I know it's a bit confusing, I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, I just explained them. And just to clarify, in the chart, the stream still appears as 24th notes. We only stretch it to 16th notes when we're deciding how many number of measures the streams are and at what BPM the streams are. I think a great example of this is Helix from the pack Resistance device. The song BPM is 130, but since all of the streams are written as 24th notes, then the effective BPM is actually 195. If you see a number wrapped in parentheses, it marks the total number of measures of break between runs. This means that there is no stream for that many measures. It does not necessarily mean that the break has no arrows, although if the step artist was nice, maybe it does. So looking back at our previous example, this is the one with the 8 measure runs. Each of the dashes denotes a break. If we wanted to be more clear about how long each of those breaks are, what we could do is replace the dash with the number in parentheses. So what this new example is saying is that each break is 2 measures long. A number marks with an asterisk marks stream that has any number of unsubstantial breaks between. For example, the breakdown for difficulty G in Sharpnel Streams V3 has a lot of tiny breaks, so using an asterisk notation lets you take what would normally be a very long breakdown that's difficult to read at a glance and simplifies it. This is basically saying there's effectively 167 measures of stream with no particularly good breaks. And just for reference, this is what one of those breaks in difficulty G looks like. It's really not much of a break at all. Rather than marking every single two measure break, it's much easier to just use an asterisk to shorten that notation out. From here, different markings denote different amounts of break. An apostrophe is a micro break, usually less than a measure long. A dash is a short break, a slash is an even longer break, and a pipe is an even longer break than that. The cutoff lengths are more or less defined, but for the purpose of executing text charts, this is all you really have to know. I really just wanted to include this section for completeness, because there are a handful of tech charts that will have streams as part of their charts. Once again, definitely check out the video description if this is something you're interested in digging into deeper. For tech players, due to the nature of tech charts being shorter in length, the only important thing you really need to know is the concept of counting measures and understanding that it's notated as measures of 16th notes at a given BPM. Crossover brackets are a notation I've seen used by Implode. It's a bracket that you do crossover. Bracket taps are another notation used by Implode. 
They're a lot like what I described in the bracket section of the video, where you're pressing two notes on a hold and having to hit other notes at the same time. Afronovas and Scoobies is a notation I've seen used by Chief Skittles. They're another way of describing laterals. I think that most people would use XO to describe these patterns as crossovers, though a specific notation like this is helpful to know exactly what kind of crossovers to expect. These notations describe patterns that mix steps and jumps. The notation SJ is used by Chief Skittles to describe step jumps. The notations JU and TJ are used by Valix. TJ is named after Tell, the ITG official, JU just stands for jumps. Valix having two notations to basically describe the same thing is understandably confusing. I asked him directly about this, and he said he'll probably just use the JU notation going forward. Even though TJ is something only used by Valix, I wanted to include this detail just to clear any confusion in case you see it. Step jump patterns happen in the form of steps going into jumps, sometimes called tell jumps, and steps coming out of jumps, sometimes called reverse tell jumps. The JU notation can be used to describe both. In addition, if there's a chart that has a section like the repeated jumps in the DDR chart for possession, this would be a good notation to use for that as well. Wadats is a notation used by Demo and references the ending of the expert chart for Wadatsumi in DDR. Wadatsumis require you to take advantage of the hold leniency in ITG by leaving a hold entirely to hit other notes. When we look at this example and add in some extra notes, the way to play this should be a bit more clear. And just to make it even more obvious, here's the example with the footing filled in. This pattern is also featured in Upshift in ITG Alex's compilation 4. Holdstream is the notation used by Zaya and Rust, and describes when holds and taps are arranged in a way that it can be treated as a continuous stream. Look at this excerpt from Alone Intelligence in the pack Comicat 95. Rather than staying on the hold and having the right foot play a syncopated 16th note rhythm, we can play the hold as 8th notes instead. Doing this fills in all of the gaps and turns the section into stream. Round steps are a notation used by Zaya from the old Brisbane DDR community. They're steps that you round. The trick notation so far is something I've only seen used by Zaya and Janice 5k. The original use of the notation is in Monster Joe's Bring Me to Life from the SSSC 1 pack. If you see this notation, it means that there's a quirk about the chart that will make it easier to execute if you understand it. I think these two charts are great at showing off a chart that's really confusing on sight read and becomes easier if you figure out the quirk. Since showing you these charts and explaining what the tricks are defeats the purpose of there being a trick in the first place, I encourage you to check out these charts yourself to see if you can figure it out. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful at all, or you want to see more content like this, I'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel. Subscribing shows me that content like this is something you guys want to see more of, and it'll really encourage me to make more content like this for the community. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if there's something you wish I talked more about, 
or if there's another video you want me to try to make, leave a comment with your idea and I'll see what I can do. And then lastly, if you want to learn more about either ITG Tech or ITG Stamina, or if you want to find other people in the community to talk with and share scores, check out the video description and I'll leave links with where to go to find those groups. Seriously, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.